So when I share with you guys how frequently I brush my teeth, I think you guys, I think you'll be a little bit in disbelief. There's all the chocolate and all the junk food you eat early worth it. I like my smile, slight my teeth in, occasionally yellow at times. I got them clean maybe about a month ago. I've never been a big fan of the whole tooth whitening thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I did bring, I did bring some, uh, I brought some props with me here. I got some floss. Oh, looks like I need to lower my seat a little. There we go. I've got my, my handy dandy toothbrush. I've got my scaler. A lot of people don't use a scaler. And I got my little interdental toothbrush, whatever these things are called. One of my favorite things, things to do when I'm brushing my teeth is bathing. All right, so legitimately, why am I making this video? I have not had a cavity, I kid you not, in at least 10 years. I promise I'm telling the truth. I don't really have any issues with my teeth. In fact, the last time I had an issue with my teeth was because I was chewing, I think I was eating an olive or something, and somehow the I bit on the pit a little bit. No, you know what it was? I'm lying. It wasn't even an olive. It was quinoa. So I eat a ton of quinoa every day, but I just absolutely love quinoa. But the reason I'm mentioning quinoa is because once in a blue moon, you'll get a little pebble in there. So I cooked some quinoa. I was chewing it all of a sudden. I felt this super hard thing. I spit it out. And of course it's a little pebble and it cracked the back, back of my tooth. Not like really bad, just like chipped off a little bit of the, one of the points, I forget the names. Cuspid? Cuss something like that? I don't know. But other than that, I really, I never have issues with my teeth. And I thought about it because back when I was a kid, I kid you not, I'd go to the dentist like every six months. I would always have one to two cavities and then I would sit there in the dentist chair and I would be like, oh, I own my mouth like this and I'm getting an injection on the front of my mouth. And I remember thinking as a kid, I'm like, Nick, is all the chocolate and all the junk food you eat really worth it? And of course, when you're sitting there and you're in a lot of pain and you've got one of those needles, especially like in the front of your gums where it hurts like hell, of course the answer is no and you and you berate yourself you're like okay after this i'm not eating any more junk food it's totally not worth it and of course you know maybe that works for a week or two maybe even a month but then junk food tastes really really good <laughs> you can't resist it especially as a kid i used to drink a ton of pop so in this video i wanted to share with you what's different between when i was a little kid and getting a lot of cavities between a grown adult now and never getting cavities so what's changed the main I, 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 there was one thing i could recommend for everybody to change out there that does not want any sort of cavities cavities. I think the number one thing for me was not drinking pop. And I stopped drinking pop when I was 17. My buddy and I would get those big two liter Mountain Dews. We used to shake them up, fizz them out and guzzle them. Right. And I think pop, it's like liquid sugar. If you look at the content of pop, it's got so much sugar. And I think that is like the, the number one culprit to kids getting cavities is by far pop. Like if I could put a bet on that, I would absolutely say pop is probably the worst offender for cavities. The second thing I do is I just eat super clean. I mean, like I look at my diet and I don't really eat any junk food. Occasionally I have some chocolate. Occasionally I will have the fact that it's taken me a while to think of like junk food that I eat. I mean, what is junk food for me? I mean, we we eat almost a vegan diet. Every now and then I'll have some eggs, maybe a little bit of salmon, but I'm mostly plant-based. Like I said, I eat a ton of this quinoa. And so really like I don't, if I were to look at my overall sugar intake, I don't really get a ton of sugar whatsoever. It's all naturally occurring sugar and fruits and vegetables and dried mangoes, things like that. But I have pretty much no sugar. So if I were to compare my sugar consumption now to my sugar consumption as a kid, I guarantee you when I was eating, I was eating, I mean, pop, I was eating little Debbie's. I was playing a ton of basketball. So I was like burning it all off super fast, but my sugar consumption back then must have been insane. In fact, I would say now that I probably eat in a, in a whole year's time, I would say that I probably get about the same sugar that I would get maybe in two weeks as a teenager. Like that's how much pro processed food I used to eat. We used to just take all sorts of crap and blend it together in a, in a giant bowl. My sister and I would do this and then we would eat it. It was disgusting. Like we made our own Oreos. It was so, so gross. And that's definitely what gave me cavities. And, and I used to even brush more back then. That's what's crazy. Like I was paranoid about brushing and I had one of those electric expensive, really nice sonic toothbrushes and I would try more or less every time I ate some junk food, I would try to brush my teeth afterwards. I tell you this, it doesn't even matter. Like if I could go back then and eat what I eat now, I probably could go, I probably could brush my teeth literally once a week and have less cavities than I did on the junk food diet brushing a bunch. I mean, that's my secret, just decreasing your sugar intake. And then I wanna talk about my oral hygiene cause that's changed over the years. And I wanna share with you guys what I do now, which is pretty much I brush once a day, believe it or not, I use an El Cheapo soft toothbrush because when I was using the harder bristles, I was eroding some of my gums up here. And my dentist said that you don't want to brush your gums 
too vigorously because it can recede the gum line. Plus your bristle brush is not gonna, bristle brush, plus your bristle brush, bristle brush is not going to remove the tartar. It's not gonna remove the plaque. That stuff is, it's too hard. So you need something like a scaler, but I wanna go back to the toothbrush real quick before we talk about the scaler. So the toothbrush, I switched from an electric toothbrush to a manual toothbrush because I noticed with my electric toothbrush, I feel like it did a pretty good job overall, but it always missed that spot behind these teeth. And I could feel with my tongue a little bit, you know that like little placky feeling you feel when you're you're moving your tongue around your mouth? I always would have that. I ha, I ha. And so I switched to this and I really focus when I brush on working that area out and I've never had any issues since. So I don't really believe that the electric toothbrushes help us as much as they do. And I would imagine it might be one of those things where it's industry funded research by these electric, electric tooth, electric, I can't, I cannot talk today <laughs> by these electric toothbrushes that makes it look like they're doing a better job than they actually are. Okay, then I will use my floss and I just floss once a day. So I'll floss before I brush. And then once in a while, I will just use my, my little bristle brush here to get in between my teeth. So sometimes I'll floss, then I'll use this bad boy and then I'll brush my teeth. And when I floss, I don't really do anything special. I just try to make sure to get, you know, all directions in between my teeth as I'm flossing. And then this scaler here, I will use maybe once a month, once every two months when I feel like I'm getting a little bit of plaque built up. And I know there's some dentists out there and there's some hygienists that love those little power washers that they use inside your mouth. I think those things are absolutely disgusting. So I always ask before I'm finding a dentist, does the, what does the hygienist use to clean teeth? And do they use a scaler? And how often do they use a scaler? Because I can tell you this much, there are some hygienists out there who do not know how to use these things. And when they try to use them, it's like, I could do a better job. Then there's some hygienists out there who are completely phenomenal. They tend to be older. So I'm, I'm a little ageist when it comes to my hygienists. I like to have older hygienists because they're used to using these scalers more. And the new, some of the newer hygienists are using those blast machines, those water, high powered water machines. I think those things are just, I don't know. One, they're kind of painful. Two, I think they're just disgusting. You've got this bacterial mist that's just spraying up everywhere. I can't believe we even use those. I think they're so gnarly. It's just like taking your mouth and aerosolizing all the bacteria in it and probably like a 10 by 10 foot space when they're using those power washers. So I'm a little bit of a germaphobe as you can see, but I don't think you're supposed to use these scalers a whole lot because I think they can be kind of hard on the enamel, which is that protective layer over our teeth. So I just really use it typically like back behind my lower teeth because I notice that's when I sometimes can get a little plaque. So anytime I feel like I'm getting a little plaquey, maybe once a month, once every two months, I'll use my scaler and then I'll follow it up with some flossing and some brushing. And so I think that's the number, that is the number one thing you can do is change your diet. If there's just one change you can make, it would be getting rid of pop. Pop is just liquid sugar. It is the worst thing for your teeth. And you know, it's nice. I, I've never, I'm 38 years old, never had a root canal. The worst thing I've ever had was a cavity. Oh, I know what I forgot. Like I just swear by this. Some people swear by swishing with hydrogen peroxide. I tried that and that just made my teeth super sensitive. I think maybe once in a blue moon, it's okay if you're super diluting the peroxide. I met a judge once when I was working at FedEx. This is a crazy story. This guy was like 90 years old, would walk like this, had real bad kyphosis, real brilliant and intelligent man. I could not believe that you could be 90 years old and just as quick and witty as him. I was delivering at one of these federal buildings. We bumped into each other. We we're having a chat. Somehow we got on, we, I don't know how, I think I mentioned his teeth, how his teeth looked great. And I think he still had all of his teeth is what he mentioned. I asked him what his secret was. And he said, a little bit of peroxide. I switched with a little bit of peroxide. So I tried that back in my 20s, did not have a lot of success with it. If I were to do it now, I would dilute it and then maybe swish. But a lot of dentists, I don't think recommend it. I think it can mess with your gums. For me, when I used it, it made my teeth really like real, my gums were really sensitive after I used it. I noticed after a few weeks, so I stopped doing it. So what I do to switch is I will take like maybe five mLs, five milliliters of Listerine or whatever mouthwash you like. I will dilute and then I'll take some tap water, put a bunch of tap water, I mix them together and then I just swish for about anywhere from three to five minutes. And I think that swishing really helps. What I found is even after you brush really well, even after you floss really well, even after you use one of these silly brushes between your teeth really well, no matter how well you brush and you, you do that, you always will have a little bit remaining. And I've noticed like after five minutes, there's usually maybe a small piece of food or two that comes out and I'm noticing my battery's almost out. I just wanna share with you a hunch that I have about oral hygiene and swishing and why I only use a small amount of Listerine. I used to use what the whatever Listerine recommends, which is maybe like 20 or 30 mLs. You swish and then you spit it out. But what I noticed with that is my mouth would get really, really dry. And I, I suspect that our oral environment, similar to our gut environment, 
has sort of a healthy microbiome where all of our bacteria and whatever else happen to be living there are in healthy proportion to one another. And what I think happens is when you use Listerine, it dries out your mouth and I think it messes with those proportions and it messes with your oral hygiene. I just feel like anytime I use that full thing of Listerine, my mouth would be really dry and then I have to drink a bunch of water and it just didn't feel like right to me. Now when I just use a small amount and I mix it with water, I don't have any of those issues and I feel like my mouth is cleaner. So just experiment with that if you haven't. I also want to mention something else about the whole sugar thing. If you look Look at our consumption, our historical consumption of sugar. Back in the 1900s, like maybe if I'm remembering right, it's like 1905, we were consuming somewhere around five pounds of sugar per person per year, right? We know what five pounds of sugar looks like. It could be something like like this. Now, if you do the math, I think the average person consumes somewhere between like 160 and 180 pounds of sugar every year. Now, I weigh about 165, 170. Right, just imagine me, ugh, like a whole, I just imagine me like a dummy full of sugar. That's how much sugar we're all consuming. So it's no wonder that cavities, we have a lot of cavities in our population. And I think if you were to look at the research, you would see that as our sugar consumption went up like this, so did our cavities. And think about it historically, way before we had dentist and oral hygiene and, and, and toothbrushes and all of that, like I remember thinking when I was a kid, I was like, God, how did we survive? I would have died without a dentist. I would have died without a, I would have had so many cavities that I'd have an infection and it would travel throughout my body, get to my heart, get to my brain, whatever, and I would die. Or have an abscess that would then travel somewhere. Where am I going with this? And now I realize it's all diet. It's completely freaking diet and we weren't having so much, we weren't consuming so much sugar. And even like, even though I eat really healthy today, I know that the foods, the fruits, the apples, the pears, whatever that I'm eating, have their sugar content is way higher than what you would have found hundreds of thousands of years ago, right? Before we had all this hybrid breeding, before we had all this genetically modified food, stuff like that. Before we were trying to find the sweetest apple out there. Like if you guys have ever had true organic fruit, it is not as sumptuous and sweet as your store-bought fruit. Even if your store-bought fruit is organic, that's what I'm trying to say. But anyhow, I guess my main takeaway from this entire video, it's probably way too long and rambling at this point, is that if you just wanna fix having cavities, decrease your sugar consumption, cut out pop soda entirely.